I remember the first time I cut myself, I carved a boy's name into my leg. And um, it was, that was like, I don't want to say that was the cool thing to do in school, but a lot of girls did it in my school. And it was something that I did. I remember the thrill of it. I remember how it pierced through me and it, it gave me a feeling that I'd never felt when I was trying to turn off my emotions and all of the pain that I felt from my parents' divorce and, and the disappointment that I felt that I was in school and things like that. I tried to just turn that off and feeling this, it was like, it made me feel alive. When the pain is, is your, you sort of become numb to the pain of your life and you feel that physical pain, it reminds you that you are alive. So I don't really quite know when I started sort of cutting, you know, slitting my wrists and things like that, but it did become an addiction. I, I just, I experimented with pain and I was very angry. There was so much anger inside of me. And I was always breaking things and getting in fist fights and um, hurting myself and screaming. And, you know, I was, I mean, I think that any normal teenage girl is, is very, their emotions are, are crazy. Um, but for me, it was much more toxic. Um, so, when I was 13 years old in, in eighth grade, I, that's when my, my parents put me into, started putting me in therapy and things like that. I have seen so many psychologists and um, therapists and you, I mean, you can't even imagine. And there's so many other kids that this is what they go through. They just, I mean, if, if kids go through depression, especially from, from my experience, my parents didn't know what this was or how to deal with this or why I was cutting myself. It just seemed crazy to them. Like what psycho would, would take a pair of scissors to her own wrist and, and slice through her skin? You know what I mean? So that's one I was already right off the bat misunderstood and I didn't understand what, what I was going through. I just wanted to put myself through these things for some reason because it gave me this rush. It let me know that I was alive. It, it was how I felt, you know, um, on the inside. So I had to show it on the outside. At that point, I remember just thinking, none of these doctors are gonna listen to me. None of these doctors are gonna help me. And really, they were putting words in my mouth and just shoving pills down my throat. I mean, I was on every antidepressant that you could even imagine. And um, and every kid that 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 ex was going through the same stuff that I was going through was just getting pills shoved down their throat. Nobody really wanted. Nobody listened to them. That's what it felt like. Nobody listened to me. And um, so I was still cutting. And now I, now I have been labeled. I've had this label slapped on my face of depression. And when you're 13 years old. Your whole goal in life is just to find somewhere you belong. You don't really know who you are. You're just starting to, to, to look older and kind of more like an adult than you did when you were younger. And now all these adult things are coming into your life. And, um, you know, the opposite sex is now, is now in the factor. And, and there's all these clickiness in school. And it's like you kind of just want to know where to fit. And... As soon as the doctor slapped depression on my face, and that was that was it. That was who I was. That was the label that I was going to carry into my entire adolescence and and through into my adult life. Um, it took a very long time to realize that I am not my depression. That it is. It's. It's not even something that I deal with. It's it's just it's just a part of life for me. It's. You know, one day I will get to the point where I will never be depressed like I've been in the past. I will always have moments of sadness, um, but depression is not who I am.
and it never will be who I am from this day forth and you know when I came to that discovery but so now I'm 13 years old and I am depression I'm crazy <laughs> that's it every doctor thinks I'm crazy I'm like every like all the therapists that I was talking to were like shocked at the stuff that I was saying and it's like if a therapist is shocked by the stuff that I'm saying I must be really crazy <laughs> because you know I'm sure she's seen it all hasn't she you know so that was who I was and that's that's the label and the, the the idea of myself that I took into my life. You are not your depression. You are not your condition. You are not what you think everyone else thinks of you. You are here for a reason and the fact that you're going through all this hell is so that you can be the person you need to be to help the world. You deserve a happy life and you deserve love, not because, not because you are anything but you, not be, just because, just because you exist, you deserve that.